Welcome back to another exciting episode of GPSing. In this episode, you're going to learn how to make a waypoint and how to find waypoints, how to enter waypoints or locations into your GPS that you're trying to find. Okay, you're out in the field and you've managed to acquire four satellites. However, you're still only getting an accuracy of 50 feet. You may want to try to get a closer amount of accuracy than 50. Probably 15 would be more appropriate. Just like it's important to make sure that your map data are matching, it's real important when you're setting waypoints to make sure they're as accurate as you can possibly get them. Otherwise, people might end up trying to find a waypoint and they could be here or here or here or here or here. The way that you acquire more accuracy in your reading is to walk around. Usually, once you have a spot identified, walk around in a circle and see if you can get this number down to about 15 feet. The numbers on your coordinates change as you and the satellites continuously re-verify your position. As you circle your location, try to choose the best set of numbers for your waypoint. If you're having a hard time getting a more accurate reading, Think about where you're trying to get your reading from. If you're under a large tree canopy, it may be interfering with getting the most accurate signal possible. Here we've gotten our accuracy down to 17 feet, which for a Garmin Rhino is pretty close. To set a waypoint now, you would press your mouse stick down and hold it. The shortcut menu appears and it says mark waypoint. You click down on the mouse again and your waypoint appears. This will be the second waypoint that we're setting in this machine. If I wanted to, I could scroll up and rename the waypoint anything I desired. Then make sure that you go down past the coordinates and press OK. Now I have the waypoint set called Spot. So you may be wondering what the difference is between making a waypoint on the Rhino 120 and what is the difference between using a GPS unit like the one in your parents' car. When you set a point on your Rhino 120, all you're going to see on the navigation page is an arrow of which direction to go in. That's a lot different from a GPS in a car that names each street as you reach it and tells you whether to turn right or left. This will show you to turn right or left. It's not going to tell you where you're headed. You need to keep your eyes open when you're walking to make sure you're going somewhere safe. Now it's time to figure out how to find a waypoint that you've entered into your GPS. As you can see, from this point I currently have accuracy of about 24 feet, which isn't too bad. I'm going to go ahead and change the page to Find and Go on the main menu. I'm going to click in on the mouse, and I'm going to click Waypoint. Find Nearest. Oh, there's only one waypoint. That makes it pretty easy. It's called Spot Number 2. So I'm going to say I want to go to spot number two. I'm going to click on it with the mouse. And it is already set up on go to. So I'm going to click go to. Right away, the navigation page opens up and there's an arrow pointing. 
However, the direction the arrow is currently pointing is not necessarily the right direction. To find the right direction, I have to get up and start moving around. Spot two has been a little tricky to find. Once you find yourself walking in a circle, you can assume that you're getting closer to your destination, even if the GPS hasn't alerted you that you're close yet. These swallows are better at going in circles than I am. I am now approaching my destination titled Spot 3. As you can see, the trip computer is telling me that uh, my final destination is getting closer as far as its distance in feet. And as I finally reach the destination, the computer lets me know that I am arriving at my destination. One of your options that you have when you're navigating is that you can choose what kind of information the trip computer is giving you. Um, this is currently my distance to my destination. If I wanted to, I could click on that and I could choose uh, my current estimated time of arrival, my elevation, my final destination, my final distance. There's a whole bunch of different things that uh, it can tell you. Let's say I wanted it to tell me the heading instead. So it says, oh, you're heading southwest at the moment. Which doesn't match up if you look at it with the compass, but that's because at the moment I am not in motion. Let's talk about entering new coordinates on the fly. Sometimes you may be out in the field and you're going to want to enter a new set of coordinates. So go to the mark page and highlight your current location. Once you've done that, press the thumbstick down and an on-screen keyboard for making changes will appear. Once again, go to the mark page, highlight your location, press the thumbstick down, and open the on-screen keyboard. You'll notice on the third and fourth row of this small keyboard are small arrows for left and right and up and down. These arrows help the cursor navigate through your coordinates so that you can make precise adjustments to your location without changing all the numbers. Your hours, in this case I'm at north 48 degrees and west 122 degrees, probably won't change if, unless you're planning on getting in a car and driving somewhere. But the minutes and seconds most certainly can change depending on your location and where you're headed. Enter your new changes on the on-screen keyboard. And when you're finished, click OK. The location is highlighted again with the new coordinates. Now, use the thumbstick to go to Go To, highlight that, and press the thumbstick down. Once you do this, a new navigation page will open pointing you in the direction of the newly entered coordinates. This completes the 4-H basic training in how to use a Garmin Rhino 120. In future installments, we'll talk about how to use your GPS to play games and how to install software so that you can transfer data from your GPS onto a GIS map. Have a nice day.